Hey, what's up everybody? Now you know I love turtles and tortoises, but I happen to love crocodiles, lizards, and yes, I love snakes. And you guys have been asking for snakes, so I'm gonna show you a species that I just happen to love. It's the coastal carpet python, and that is today's episode of Camp Kennedy. I'm gonna go get them for you. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tenor. All right, now the first thing you guys are gonna notice is I'm really excited about snakes and more excited to do what I'm doing right now. This used to be Solomon, the monkey tail skinks habitat. He's now moved over to another one. I'm actually keeping, I'm going to be keeping snakes outdoors. I just wanna see them in a naturalistic environment. To me, that's what's exciting about snakes, to see their behavior. And as you can see, this coastal carpet, really cool animal. You can find these animals in parts of Indonesia, New Guinea, down through Australia, and even in some parts of the Solomon Islands. Now, that's the, the general genus, which is uh, Morelia. But this is the carpet python. This one is the coastal carpet. It's the largest of the carpet pythons. We're gonna try and get this guy out. Come here, buddy. He's being a good boy. It's a male. Males don't get quite as large as the females, but these are the largest of the carpet pythons. Now, you can see just how amazingly he can hold on <laughs> without actually having any legs. He just wraps his body around. Let's see. This is one challenge about getting the snake out to show everyone, but I think it's more exciting. So let's see, don't wanna hold his head. We wanna get him over here. And you can see just how incredible he uses this body to hold on. He does not wanna leave. This is not gonna be easy, guys. But it makes for a fun and exciting episode. So we wanna just be gentle. Don't wanna force him, and there we go. We got him out. So I'm gonna push him out. And this is the other reason I like this snake. He's active, he's not snappy but he's really cool. So as I was saying, we're gonna take him out and we're gonna have fun with him today because it's no fun to see a snake in a tub or in a cage. Let's go give him some exercise. So basically the carpet pythons are named carpet pythons because they have these really cool patterns. And um, you can see people think they look like carpet, but the coastal carpet is actually one of the more abundant species of the carpet pythons. You have your jungle carpet pythons, your Darwin python, your diamond pythons. They all belong to the same family of python, carpet python. So basically, what I wanna do is bring them on out to my favorite tree to hang out with them in. It's the ficus tree, and these trees are actually found in their habitat, so I wanna give him some exercise. And the cool thing about these, these snakes uh, let's get up close and you can see right here. They've got these really cool faces. I love the shape of their heads. Just really pronounced head, arrow shaped head, but it's not a venomous snake. And they've got the labial pits, which helps him find his warm blooded prey, like birds and small mammals. Now, as I said, these guys are the largest of the uh, carpet pythons. Hey, buddy. Uh, the males of this species get to about eight, nine foot, and the females can get over 10 foot, close to 14. But as you can see, they, the females will get a little bit thicker as well. This guy's doing pretty good. He's got a few more years to go, but look at how he grabs onto that. You see that? They're a semi-arboreal snake, which means that they're at home on the ground or up in the trees. And this, look at how he holds on with that head to wrap his body around. This is what I absolutely love doing with the snake, and that is getting in the tree with him and seeing him move throughout his habitat. It's so exciting, man. So anyhow, these snakes are also found in Australia, in their range of Australia. These are the snakes that are commonly found in suburban areas. As a matter of fact, this snake's name is Colin, named after my buddy Colin Schumark from Critter Cam. I just love that guy, so I had to name a snake after him since it's an Aussie snake. But the coastal carpets are actually doing a beneficial thing. They're able to adapt to human settlements, and they're eating a lot of vermin that would be bothering human beings like rats and other uh, rodents that are out there uh, in Australia. So these animals are, are really adaptable, fantastic. And I love that they're semi-arboreal because you really get to see a wide range of their behavior. Um, this animal's mostly not 
nocturnal. However, it does come out and bask from time to time. You can find them on the ground, you can find them moving through grasslands, but mostly, if you look up, you'll find them hanging out in trees and in roofs of houses. So I love to get up here and watch him do his thing. He's so impressive. And this particular animal was kept by a couple friends, a friend of a friend, and they could no longer keep it any longer. So they called me up and asked if I would be willing to take it. And because I am a snake lover, like I, I think they're impressive animals, um, I said yes. And it's really inspired me. I have a few snakes and I want to see more of these snakes in habitats that are outdoors. A lot of snake keepers are kind of moving along that range uh, in that direction because snakes behave differently when they're in their natural environment. So. I don't really worry about any uh, problems, ectoparasites, you know, every now and again you'll get a tick, but they're easily controlled. Um, I like to see them out there. You'll see them move through their, their different microclimates. You see them utilize their hides, but at night, these animals are moving about. So I feed him a couple large rats every few weeks. He does very well. You got to make sure their humidity is uh, proper for the species. You want to keep them around 65% humidity. There is a wet and dry season from where they're from. Also, you want to make sure that they have access to fresh drinking water, a nice hiding area. And then, of course, when it gets too cold, the animal gets brought in and it's in its nice comfy winter quarters. But this is really cool. And the snake is being, it's trying to hide right now. But you can see I woke him up. And the other cool thing about the carpet python here being a semi-arboreal snake is the fact that it's, it's really strong and it does this really cool telescoping thing where it can stretch way out to reach different branches. I love that. So cool. This animal is amazing. So there you have the coastal carpet python found in Australia. It is a beautiful snake. It's a semi-arboreal snake and uh, I just love them so much. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Camp Ken. We're gonna have a lot more snake episodes coming up. I'm gonna show you also some new habitats that I'm creating for them, and we're gonna have a great time seeing snakes in more naturalistic environments. I'll leave you with him slithering through the trees. See ya. I'm making sure, oh, he's hissing at me. I'm gonna get bit while upside down. How's that? Hey guys, he's totally not happy with me right now. He's a little nervous because I'm coming from above. You got me? I got you. Oh, I just love coastal carpet pythons, man. They're semi-arboreal, which is kind of like me. I love to climb trees and I like to climb trees with snakes. So it's really cool to be hanging out here upside down with this snake, man. But I was making him nervous because I'm coming from above, which is what a predator would be doing. But he's been very nice to me. Hey, buddy. All right, I'm gonna get out of here because the blood's rushing in my head. I'm gonna pass out. I'll leave you now with this beautiful coastal carpet. See ya. Dude. Is that good? Yeah, we'll figure out a way to make that work.